Hey guys, how's it going? It's Pierre from Solomon Firearms Training and Overwatch Security. This video is a conclusion to the grave issues within our two-way community series that I was doing. That was the video about what I wanted to give my speech during the two-way rally. The mic was taken away from me and you guys saw, saw me post uh, my thoughts. The video was about two hours long in total. And then I chopped it up over, you know, several weeks on social media and posted on Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that. Um, originally, when it had happened, I was very, very upset. I was very mad that the mic was taken away from me. I was very mad that I was denied my First Amendment rights to freedom of speech. I was very mad that a black man was being silenced and that the two-way community, um, well, the event leaders, and I guess the community per se, um, they didn't want to listen or do the things that they wanted, that, that, that we need to be doing. So as I posted the video, uh, posted it to gun groups online and stuff like that. I went on several interviews on other 2A leaders, um, you know, YouTube channels and stuff like that. And, you know, I had the conversation with many, you know, patriots, 2A leaders, instructors, gun shop owners, whatever, you know, leaders in the 2A industry. And when I had these many, many discussions, um... It became clear to me that there was a, um, they just don't care. There's a level of, of, of indifference. Now, you could say, well, Pierre, it's racism, you know, the 2A movement is full of white racists, da, da, da. The racism is the why, right? Why are they indifferent? They're indifferent because, you know, they hate black people or whatever. I don't need to make that argument. And do I believe some people in the in the Twitter community are racist? Yes. Do I believe it's majority of people? No. But I don't need to argue the why. I just need to point out the indifference. There is a clear indifference to the plight of gun owners that are non-white conservatives. Because I made my points very clear. I express the concerns of our community very loudly and at the end of the day the resounding message that I got one way or another however it was wrapped up and marketed was go start your own rally why don't you do your own 2A movement because I said because I said if 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 99% I was using 80% but when I learned how many gun owners there's over half a million gun owners that you know that live here in in the state of mass i thought there was only <laughs> i thought there were far less when 99 percent of the community is not showing up and you don't care why you said you said you didn't know and then when i told you why that community wasn't showing up your resounding attitude and answer was indifference go start your own rally go start your own group if you can do better, then we want to see you do better. And instead of two way leaders saying, hey, you're actually right, right? Because no one can argue the point that majority of gun owners in the state are not showing up, right? You can't argue that point that, oh, yes, they are, or else we wouldn't be here. The majority of gun owners are not engaging the political process. They're not holding their local politicians accountable. And they're not organizing in the way that anti-gunners are. Anti-gunners are well-funded, they're well-organized, they are well, um, everything. They're well-oiled machine. And on the two-way side, we're fractured, we're lazy, and we don't do the things that, 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 that we need to do, we're divided. And I went from anger to sadness and then kind of like anger again. But I'm. it was really disappointing. It was really disappointing because I, <laughs> you know, <laughs> as they say in the black community, I got my Negro wake up call, right? 
I got my Negro wake up call because these people, they talk about the idea of freedom, but they don't love the reality of it. Or they only want the reality of freedom only for some and not for everyone. Because at first they claim they didn't know. We don't know why the rest of the gun owners are not showing up. We don't know why black, browns, Latino, Asians, LGBTQ, any of any other demographic, however you want to chop it up by race, by sexual fucking identity, by gender, by political affiliation, however you want to chop it up, right? The point is, other than white conservatives, no other group in the 2A movement is at these rallies, are at these meetings, are at these these gun shows and freaking, um, what are they doing? It's not a gun show. It's the, the dressing up thing where you dress, fashion show. They're not at these dinners. They're not at all these things. And the point that I always make is I'm, I'm almost always the only black guy in the room. Almost always. And then if, if I'm not, it's because <laughs> most of the time I brought that other person with me. They're, they're the part of my circle. And then it's like, they just don't care. Because they claim, they, they, they feign ignorance like they didn't know. And now I'm clearly articulating that the MAGA stuff, the Trump stuff, all the other political stuff, America first, immigrant stuff, all this, all this crap that is not related to the Second Amendment divides gun owners. We don't like it. It, it, it concerns us. It makes us feel like, like, like we're not on the same page. And they heard the message loud and clear. And the answer is they don't care. They're not going to leave their MAGA hats at home. They're not going to bring their Make America, Make America Great. They're not going to leave that at home. They're going to wear whatever they want. And they don't care. Oh, who, boo, who, get over your feelings. We don't care. And I'm just like, as a leadership of an organization, which is the 2A movement here in Mass, that is severely under attack by anti-gunners. How could you not care that 99% of your population is not showing up? How could you not care that it's only white conservatives that are showing up to these 2A rallies? And then they're like, well, that's not true, Pierre. My best friend is black. I got a black guy right here. And who's the black friend, the black best friend? It's freaking Uncle Ruckus. <laughs> it's Uncle Ruckus. That's the black friend that they're claiming who doesn't represent the black identity or any other identity. <laughs> you know, they're holding Uncle Ruckus side by side talking about, we've got another black guy here. Like... <laughs> I'm just so, I'm mad, I'm frustrated, I'm disappointed, and, and, you know, this, this rally happened, like, over a month ago, and I've been trying to post these videos, I've been trying to edit the stuff, and time and time again, what I've come to realize and, and conclude, I just don't have the time. I don't have the time, I don't have the energy, I don't have the willingness to continue to fight for a unity that only I desire. I'm the only one fighting for this unity. So I'm begging at a seat for a table that people don't even want me there. Because if somebody expresses a concern, if somebody is telling you, hey, you doing this hurts me. And you don't and you say, I don't care, and I'm gonna do it anyways. That means that person doesn't care about your well-being. They don't care. I don't care about the why. I don't want to argue racism. I don't want to go run down the rabbit hole of all the bullshit. At the end of the day, what I can measure is a level, a deep level of indifference. 
They don't care about our experiences that we run with the police. They don't care about the injustice to our civil rights. They don't care how we have a different history and different everyday experience when it comes to the Second Amendment. They don't care. Y'all can argue about the why, but that's what I'm focused on. If you are indifferent to my struggles, if you are indifferent to my plight and my pleas, and I reach out to you, and in earnesty, in sincerity, I talk to these people in sincerity and really wanting to work with them, really wanting to say, hey, this 2A movement, this is what it's lacking. It's lacking the main body movement. So why don't you adjust your messaging so that you can attract all gun owners? That is their target audience, not Republican gun owners, all gun owners, Democratic any other category that you want to chop it up. That's your target audience. That is your people. And when you don't care about anyone but white conservatives, you get exactly what you get here in Massachusetts. You get an anti-gun Democrat. You get an anti-gun AG, governor, and all other levels. And they don't care because you can't affect them. Why would Maura Healy care about a couple hundred white conservatives showing up in the lawn? Yeah, not gonna vote for her. Yeah, not her target audience. And no amount of bitching and complaining that you do can affect her seat politically. The only people that can hold those anti-gunners politician accountable are the very members of your two-way community that you don't care about, that you don't target, that you don't want to, to cater to. You don't want to cater to them. And I don't need to name anybody specific. I don't need to talk about any organization. It is what it is. But now what I know is that I can hold the 2A leadership accountable I can hold y'all accountable. Because at first you feign ignorance that I didn't know. But now I've told you. Now you know. Now you've seen my videos. Now we've had the discussions. Now I've gone to your meetings. And, 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 and I spend my thousands of dollars every year to support a cause that I believe that we had a united front in. But I learned through my hard work that you are indifferent to my suffering. You are indifferent to the suffering of my people. And because of that, I can't do future work with you. How can I truly try to work with you arm in arm, shoulder to shoulder, on that front line, knowing that you don't give a damn? I don't care about the why. I do not want to argue about the why. All I care are about results. Results that I can measure. Results that I can analyze. Data points that I can say, okay, here's where we are, here where we here's where we want to go, here's the steps that we need to, to take. That's what I care about. That's how my business is successful. That's how I've been doubling my business every year because I focus on results. I provide results. And what I try to do in a two-way community here is bring that same level of success. Talk about the elephant in the room. And I virtually got told to go F myself. Because... Because what I didn't hear the leader say, right? We talked about everything. We had all types of discussions. But what I didn't hear, the silence that was deafening, the silence was, I didn't hear, yes, we are going to target other gun owners that are non white conservatives to have them join our cause. We're going to make the adjustments so that way our two-way community, our space is welcoming to all. We're going to unite on this two-way front 
so that way we can defeat these anti-gunners and have our basic civil liberties and our human right to self-defense. So what that tells me is you guys value something more than your Second Amendment. Because if you truly cared about the two-way, if you truly cared about your human right to self-defense, you would not leave 99% of your population 600,000 gun owners in the state of Massachusetts and a couple hundred gun owners at best at these rallies. Couple dozens in these meetings. And it's the same people. It's the same instructors. It's the same organization. There's no growth. There is zero growth in these meetings. I've been going to these meetings and these events year to year. And it's the same group of people. It's the same pictures that we take every event. The same email that gets posted out. Hey, we had this great event. Thank y'all for showing up. We appreciate y'all. How can you run a business and an organization and not be focused on growth? Well, Pierre, if you can do it better, then why don't you? I hear you loud and clear. Go start my own rally. Go start my own organization. Go start my own movement. If I don't like it over here, then go start my own shit. I hear you. I hear you loud and clear. Those who are indifferent to the suffering of my people are no friends of mine. And it breaks my heart because I truly thought that we could be friends. I truly thought that we could have authentic bonds. I truly thought that, that you shared the desire for all people to have their human rights and civil liberties. But now I see that that vision is only for some, not for all. Make America great again for all. When was America great again? When was America great for all? I had a conversation with a guy and then he told me, so I asked him that question. I said, you say we all have the same rights. So I said, what year did African Americans have equal Second Amendment rights, just like everybody else. This man looked me in my eye and told me the late 1800s. <laughs> the late 1800s. There's some clear cognitive dissonance that is happening here. The late 1800s. We didn't have the right to eat. We didn't have the right to read and write. We didn't have the right to vote. We didn't have the right to own shit. We didn't have the right to go to school. We didn't have the right to drink out of the same fountain. We didn't have the right to sit in the front of the bus. We didn't have basic human rights. We didn't have basic human rights, but somehow we had the right to own firearms. Martha Luther King was denied his license to carry application. The man who literally died on a pacifist cause of nonviolence. And he had all the reasons, <laughs> legal reasons, to properly defend himself. But we had equal rights to the Second Amendment in the late 1800s, early 1900s. Come on now, bro. These people are not dumb, these people are highly intelligent. Extremely intelligent. They hear what you are saying. They hear the concerns that I convey. They hear the complaints. They don't care. They value something more than freedom and equality for everyone. Whatever that something is, I don't know. I don't know what it is. 
I can make some educated guesses. I can look at some things and drop some decent points. But that freedom for all, America great for all, that's the part they're missing. The for all, not for some. Not for only white conservatives. It's for the Democrats too. It's for the LGBTQ too. It's for every other race and, and freaking critical um, identifier. It's for everyone, not for some. And when you try to move the conversation to include everyone, they say no thank you. So I hear you. I hear you loud and clear. It breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. Because some of these people, they're really nice people. They're really nice people. They're kind. They're respectful. You hang out with them. You can collaborate with them. They're intelligent. They do all these things. Like, 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 they are, they are, I would say, good people for the most part. Right? The gun community is a kind community, polite community. Right? You're never really going to get any overt craziness. But deep down, you can see the commitment. And the commitment is not for everyone. That's where I'm at. Can we have two way for everyone? Can America be great for everyone? Can we put everyone first? So this is the conclusion. The conclusion is, I realize that I am alone. My people are alone. My struggles are here for me to fight alone. No one is coming to save us. No one is coming to rescue us. No one is coming to do the right thing. And as always, as, as throughout history has recorded numerous times, we have to go fight and get what's ours, what's dutifully ours, what our ancestors have fought for and earned. We've got to fight tooth and claw. But I'm not begging for a seat at the table, cause I got my own shit going on, and we're gonna do great. You tell me to go start my own rally, I am gonna do that. Go do my own movements, I am gonna do that. I'm gonna do all those things that you don't wanna do. All the non-white conservative gun owners that you don't give a shit about, I'm gonna do exactly what you're telling me to do. I'm gonna eat up that market share. And when I eat that market share, and I'm killing the motherfucking game, don't come back around. Don't come back around acting like you had help throughout the whole journey. Because next time you're going to want me to collab, you're going to have to cut me a motherfucking check. Because I tried to cooperate. I tried to collaborate. I tried to sincerely, sincerely work together. And the answer is no. You're not gonna leave those hats at home. You're not gonna leave those slogans at home. You're not gonna leave your prejudices at home. You're not going to leave your differences at home. And if you can't leave your differences at home, then I can't do work with you. I'm all about getting results done. And the results are 99% of the community is not showing up. And if you don't care, if you don't care that 99% of the community is not showing up, then you're no leader of mine. I cannot follow you. I cannot follow someone who doesn't care that 99% of the gun population does not show up for when it matters most. Because they have been alienated. And then, and then, then they say, oh, I don't know why. You don't know why? I tell you why. A, B, C, D, E. So what you gonna do about that? 
Well, get out of your feelings. Why does a little hat hurt you so much? Why do you care so much? If you as a business don't give a damn about your customer, then cool. You're going to go out of business. Who's your customer? As I've stated in my videos, LTC holders, gun owners of all demographics is your business market. And if you don't give a damn about your market and your customer and your consumer, I'm going to eat up your motherfucking market share. I'm going to eat you up and you're going to be out of business. Because I'm cooking in the kitchen right now. Right now I'm cooking. I'm cooking. You know how we Haitians got get down. We got cats and dogs in there apparently. All, all the neighborhood pets. <laughs> We got bones and chicken feed and all that stuff. I use that all for fuel for fire, man. Good inspiration, bad inspiration. I throw all that shit in the pot. We cooking. We cooking. Stir it all up. Stir it all up. Because when I come to serve, I'm serving. I'm serving L's. I'm not out here to participate. I'm here to take over. If you guys don't care about the 99% of non-white conservative gun owners, if you don't care about them, then I'm going to eat, eat up that market share. And you're going to come back. You're going to come back. Because I produce results. Now when you come back, it's going to cost you. Because I tried to work with you for free. I tried to collaborate for free. I tried to move the two-way movement for free with y'all. Just put in my blood, sweat, and tears like everybody. If you don't want my business, then okay. Because if you don't leave your differences at home, I'm not showing up. I'm not spending any more time, money, energy, arguing, resources, none of that. I'm not doing it no more. If you don't care about my concerns as a customer, as a consumer that I am bringing to you, if you don't care, then I'm going to take my business elsewhere. Because I know if you don't have a seat at the table, then that means you're on the menu. And we're asking for a seat at the table, and you're saying, nah, you're not welcome here. We're not going to leave our differences at home. I don't want to do no work with people that can't do their businesses, that can't leave their differences at home. No real work. Yeah, we can collaborate on, oh, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, cool. But, but I, when, I, when I'm talking about authentic work, putting your blood, sweat, and tears, being in the trenches side by side, I know we're not on the same team. And it breaks my heart because I really wanted to collaborate with everyone. I wanted that unity to come together. But y'all made it clear. You don't care about everyone. You don't care about America being great for everyone. And that's where you lose me. Because I'm really ignited now. I'm really passionate. I'm really vocal now. I'm really outspoken now. I'm really going out and putting in the motherfucking work in the streets. I'm going to hold y'all accountable. If the two-way community don't give a damn about all gun owners, then I'm going to take my business elsewhere. What was that James Baldwin quote, I think? Something about a black man being angry for the anger all the time. <laughs> he, he gotta let the anger go, or else, or else he'll be angry forever. I think it was James Baldwin. But that quote. I 
I'm disappointed, man. I brought that shovel out because I really wanted us to freaking bury our differences. But now I know I got to bury my enemies too. If you're a patriot, so-called patriot, you got to remember that when the revolution happened, families were split apart. They had to pick a side. Brother looked brother in the eye and realized that they're on opposite sides. And they had to give their farewell and walk away because they knew that when they saw that brother again, that they would be enemies. If you're a so-called patriot and you want freedom for all, equality for all, greatness for all, then understand that those who don't want that and only want it for some are no patriot of yours. They're no brother of yours. And you've got to have the personal fortitude and the courage to look them in the eye and serve them that bayonet. The last gift you can give them, give your brother. Patriots had to look their family members in the eye and serve them that bayonet because their family member had put on a red coat instead of a blue coat. But what am I talking about? These are my founding fathers. You see them founding fathers had my people enslaved. Talked about ideas of everyone being free, but yet owning slaves. Having black people as three-fifths of a human being. Who's founding fathers today? But that's the conclusion. <sighs> Loud and clear. Loud and clear. The message has been indifference. And if you don't care, why should I care either? I'm going to go my own way then. Since that's what you forced me to do. You forced me to go my own way when you're unwilling to change yours to include everyone. So now you're going to have your 1% gun owners that's white conservatives and I'm going to have my 99% of everybody else. If that's the way you want to chop up the pie then so be it. I'm not begging for no seat at the table. I'm not begging no white man to treat me equally and to have compassion and to value me and to want me. I'm not doing that. My blood, my people are revolutionaries. We sparked the first global revolution as a Haitian. We made our mark on the world. And we will continue to do so. So, this is it. Wrapping up this series. Grave issues within the two-way community. That is what it is. Y'all y'all are living the reality every day. I got my Negro wake-up call. I understand where, I, where we stand. I don't hate nobody. I'm not mad at nobody. I'm just focused on the work. That's all I'm focused on. I work 100 hours a week. I'm just focused on the work. Like I picked up four new contracts since we've last spoken. I've been working like a dog. I'm tired. I can't even put these videos and edit them and do all this stuff. Like just taking this little time it's just, it's a lot. 34 minutes. And because there's so much work to do, you can't focus on hate. You can't focus on anger. Can you throw that in the pot to use it as fuel? Yeah, we're going to use that as fuel. Because sometimes you need anger. While anger is effective, it's not complete. 
And there's so much work to get done. There's so many people to reach. There's so many minds to cultivate that I can't focus solely on the people that don't want to see us win. I'm not anti anyone. I'm pro-black. I'm pro-unity and success for all. That's what I'm pro. I'm not anti anything. I, I just love myself. I love my people. I love my community. I love our history. And ain't nobody gonna make me ashamed about what we've been through. We ain't been perfect. We've been through our up and downs. And we're always gonna be self-loved and united. And that's all it is. If I'm not welcome here, then God bless you. I wish you the best. We're going to go over here. We're going to do our work. I'm not anti anyone. I just want everybody to have that pursuit of love, liberty, happiness, success for everyone. For all. Can we all be in the pursuit of that? Or do you only really want that for some? Do you like the idea or the reality of everyone? And y'all already know the answer to that. It's self-evident. But with greatness, with leadership, you're bound to run into conflict. You're bound to run into people that disagree with you. And that's cool. I learned my lesson. I learned my lesson. As some people told me, I hope you learned your lesson. Yes, I did. I learned my lesson to never put myself in a position where somebody else can take a motherfucking mic away from me. I learned my lesson. The next time a motherfucker try to grab that mic from me, it's going to be from my cold, dead hands. Like my boy said, from my cold, dead hands, come and take it. Yeah, I got that free pass this time. Because my vision, my vision was clouded. But now I see everything clearly now. Come and take that mic away from me. Come and take it. I want the next person to come and take it. You go F around and find out. But never again will I let someone else have the power to grab the mic out of my hand to silence my voice. Because what you did was you lit a, sp a spark. You lit a fire under me. And that fire is raging. I already had that fire, but you just cranked that motherfucker up. You turned that shit to an inferno. And you gonna watch me. You gonna watch me cook every motherfucking ingredient that I'm gonna put in that book, that I'm gonna put in that pot, that I'm gonna put in that range, that I'm gonna put in my store. Y'all gonna see every goddamn ingredient. Y'all not gonna silence me. I'm going to be loud. I'm going to be vibrant. I'm going to be vocal, visible in every single source of media. Every. <laughs> yo, that got me so bad right now. I'm, yo, I'm, mm, I'm amped. But this is the last time I'm going to talk about y'all. I already gave y'all too much of my life. I gave y'all way too much of my life. So y'all gonna watch me put in this motherfucking work. Cause that's what I do best. I'm Haitian. I'm Haitian motherfucking American. I put in that work. I put in that work. That soldier in me is picking up that motherfucking E2 and we're going to dig some trenches and we're going to stack some motherfucking bodies in there. Figure of speech. 
<laughs> don't, want, don't want nobody to make, you know, angry black man with a gun, you know, you gotta fight that, that narrative, that super predator, you know how they try to put that shit on us, man, I want no super predator narrative on me, so figure of speech, but we gonna be cooking, and you gonna watch every step of the way, and you gonna hate, you gonna hate, but you can't compete. Because if I put in 100 hours a week, you got to put in 150. But you ain't going to be doing that. Because at midnight, you up with your boo. <laughs> midnight, I'm hustling, making YouTube videos, nigga. <laughs> While you curled up with your little boo thing, we out here in the trenches. We moving at night. We low crawling, baby. We moving. <laughs> But y'all gonna see me put in this work, yo. For everybody that that, that messed with me, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. All the likes, subscribe, comments, I appreciate y'all. I know I got a ton of messages and inboxes and shit. I gotta get through it. I, I'm gonna get to y'all. Uh, I just wanna appreciate y'all. Thank you for rocking with me. Thank you for sharing my videos and all that. Um, this is the conclusion. And, you know... We're just going to get to work. They can't. When we're given an even playing field, we kill the game. We crush it. That's why in sports, we be killing it. Because when we're given e even opportunity, we kill it. So for those that don't want freedom and success and happiness and safety and civil liberties for all, you are no friend of mine. For those of you that do want it for all, then let's get to work. I'm not anti anybody. I'm just pro my motherfucking people. And who are my people? We Haitians, we Caribbeans, we blacks, we Americans, we for anybody that wants freedom and happiness and love and respect for all. All. I don't want to go down the list of adjectives <laughs> for all. How about we add that? Make America great again for all. Minus the again part. <laughs> but I'm out of here, y'all. That got me worth it. This is why I got you. Know, that's why I got my podcast room because I'm not going to be out here having me arguing on the internet for free. That got me messed up. Y'all yeah, gonna have to pay me. Give me my little penny. Watch the view. Give me a click. Give me a like. Let me cook. <laughs> I'm in the kitchen, y'all. I'm cooking. But thank you for everybody that messed with me. I love y'all. But they say namaste. All that. Um, we just out here grinding. That's all. They can't deny the work. They can talk shit behind your back. But what they can't do is deny your work. And I'm in entrepreneurship. I'm in my business for myself. I don't answer to nobody. No one tells me what I do. Either I got a great business plan or I don't. And we've been going strong for 10 motherfucking years. So that tells you something. We're a six-figure organization. That tells you something. We're doing something right. And it's only a matter of time till we hit that seven-figure mark. So... Like I said, if y'all mad now, y'all gonna be big mad. Big mad. Because what I got cooking in 2025, whoo, the announcements I'm gonna be making in 2025, boy. <laughs> Yo, they gonna be big mad. But that's what happens when you put in the work and you use the big brain. When you spend all your time and energy hating on people, you don't make progress. When you think about the future and you do right by everyone you come across, <laughs> the life is full of opportunities. But anyway, this video is 44 minutes long. This shit's, man. <sighs> it's all right, y'all. I know y'all got, uh, what you call it? Uh, low capacity, low, um, Attention span, so yeah, short attention span. But we're gonna be cooking, y'all. 
So I appreciate y'all. I love everybody. God bless. But never settle for indifference. At the end of the day, I'm not settling for nobody's indifference to my struggles. Point blank, period. So God bless y'all. Thank you very much. Pierre, Solomon Firearms, training over watch security. And we're going to add a couple of... <laughs> Let me not say that. I'll catch you later. Have a good night. Peace.